third graders, Mrs. D here. This week, we're going to explore the idea of comparing fractions. We learned how to read, write, and identify fractions. We know what a unit fraction is, and we learn to find equivalent fractions using models and number lines. This week, we're going to compare. So I'm going to get my highlighter tool out. It's a smart idea for you to go get your Common Core Clinic book, the one that's blue on the bottom that says numbers and operations in base 10 and fractions so that you can follow along with me as I walk you through the first two pages of guided practice in your book. You will work with your teacher in small groups this week to learn more about comparing fractions. So the key word here is compare, and we did a lot of comparing numbers back when we talked about place value in the very beginning of the year. Well, you can compare fractions too. You use the same exact symbols to compare fractions that you use to compare whole numbers. And if you remember, this symbol here means is greater than, so that's what you say when you see it. This second one here means is less than and that's what you say when you see it and of course we know that the equal sign means is equal to. The most important part about comparing fraction bo fractions boys and girls is this part here. My goodness put a big huge star next to that. When you compare first make sure the holes are the same size. So I'll give you an example of a trick question that I, that I came across a few years ago. A kid had a lot of trouble with this. It said, Lucy ate half of a sandwich and then ate half of an apple. They ate an equal amount. Well, that certainly isn't true, even though one half and one half have the same numerator and denominator. And that's because a sandwich and an apple aren't the same size. So don't get fooled, boys and girls. You can only compare fractions if the holes are the same size. If they're not, you can't. So let's take a look at the example now. Oh, sorry, I always do that. I wrote on the page there. Okay. When you compare, first make sure that the holes are the same size. Both of these squares below have one-fourth shaded. This has four parts and one part is shaded, so one-fourth is shaded here. And this bigger square also has four parts with one part shaded, so we can say one-fourth is shaded here too. But look, the area, the shaded area of the small square is much smaller or less shaded than the shaded area of the bigger square. So in this case, one-fourth does not equal one-fourth because these squares are not the same size. So that's a really, really, really important understanding. Let's take a look at the example question. Compare one-half and one-fourth. Well, you can compare the shaded parts quite easily with your eyes. The shaded part of the first square here is greater than the shaded part of the second square. So we can say one half is greater than one fourth and we can write the number sentence this way. So third graders need to be able to compare fractions writing a number sentence just like this one. I can also say one fourth is less than one half. I can say that too. That's a true statement based on the model here. See if you can draw a picture to show that one half is greater than one eighth. Go ahead, try that now. Mrs. D is going to show you how I draw a model to prove that one half is greater than one eighth. Please excuse my messy drawing. Okay, I draw one size rectangle, a big one, and then I divide it in half to make two rectangles. I'm going to show with my model one half up here, and I'm going to show one eighth here. Now, I'm going to divide the first rectangle into two parts because it's one half, and this rectangle I'm going to divide into eighths. That's easy to do. I can divide it in half, just like I did the first one, and then find the half of those halves. That gives me four equal parts. And then find the half of those. That'll give me eight. 
So let's see. Now, I'll pick a different color. I can shade this in, and I'm doing a sloppy job. You'll do a much neater job. I just wanted to show you that you too, third graders, can draw a model to show or compare fractions. There's one half, and there's one eighth. You'll do a better job and shade it all in. But you can see that I just drew a picture to show that one half is certainly greater than one eighth. Let's try some guided practice. Compare two sixths and three sixths with a model. We can do that. Here's two sixths and here's three sixths. First, find the parts that represent two sixths and three sixths, and then take a look. The shaded part for two sixths is shorter than the shaded part for three sixths. So we say that two sixths is less than three sixths. Now, to write the number sentence, you have to use a symbol to compare these fractions. Because we said two sixths is less than three sixths, remember, this means is less than. The open part of the mouth eats the bigger fraction. Okay, two sixths is less than three sixths, and we can fill it in here too. Now, you can also compare fractions on number lines. So let's take a look at that idea. Whichever fraction is closest to one whole, remember this is one whole, is the bigger fraction. So what fraction is greater, two eighths or two thirds? Well, the first thing I have to do is just identify where two thirds and two eighths is. Here's two thirds. And here is two eighths. So let's just look now. We're going to compare the locations of two thirds and two eighths. And I always tell third graders, mark it up. Look at this distance. Whoa, that distance. And then look at this distance. The distance of two thirds from zero is bigger, it's greater and closer to one than the distance of zero from two eighths. So we can say here that two thirds is greater than two eighths. And we can write that in a number sentence too now, remembering our symbols. The symbol to compare fractions, since two thirds is greater, two thirds is greater, we say two thirds is greater than two eighths. Okay, boys and girls, your assignment today is to finish page 50 and 51 on your own. I'll give you some hints about numbers one and number two. And I'd like to remind you that you should be using part of the question in your answer. So writing is important, even though we're not together. So let's take a look at this one. We'll start it. The question says, what must be the same in order to compare fractions? You write, in order to compare fractions, whatever has to be the same. I'm not going to tell you the answer. In order to compare fractions, what must be the same? That's my helper for number one. I'll give you a helper for number two also. How can you use fraction bars to compare fractions? Well, my hint here is that I showed you how to do that. I modeled it for you up on this page. If I go back to that for a minute, this is how Mrs. D used fraction bars to compare. That's what I did. So can you explain that in words? How can you use fraction bars to compare fractions? Well, let's put our text box in here. And let's use part of the question and answer. You can use fraction bars to compare fractions and you can say by or when what do you do what do you do 
when to use fraction bars to compare fractions. That's my helper for you for number two. Okay, boys and girls, your assignment is to finish these two pages on your own and make sure you show your teacher. Either bring it to your small group meeting this week or send them a picture so they can uh, help you check it. See you next time.